If you're into Iranian military gear, this one's for you. Ever wondered what tank Iran built all on its own? Let me take you deep into the story of Zulfikar. Trust me, it's more than just steel, it's strategy. After the Iran-Iraq War, Iran needed stronger armored forces fast. The old chieftains and M60s just weren't cutting it anymore. So a military team launched a bold new tank project. They called it Zulfikar, built from hard-earned battlefield lessons. Zulfikar's design mixed east and west, seriously creative thinking. It borrowed firepower from T-72's body from the M60. Its turret design was unique, definitely not a copy-paste job. They aimed for performance, flexibility, and a fully domestic machine. The first model, Zulfikar 1, showed up around 1994 officially. Weighing about 40 tons, armed with a 125mm smoothbore. Automatic loader meant it only needed three crew inside. That helped make it smaller, faster, and easier to train. Its fire control system came from Slovenia, called EFCS-3. Pretty modern stuff back then with thermal vision included. The gunner could shoot targets while the tank kept moving. That's a big upgrade over the older, clunkier tanks. The chassis was inspired by the M60, but made sleeker. Lower profile meant harder to spot, better for ambushes. Lighter armor, sure, but it could move way quicker. Perfect for the rugged terrain across Iranian borders. Zulfikar II came next a longer version with upgrades inside. One more road wheel added stability and smoother handling overall. Turret was bigger, made to test more new systems, but it wasn't mass produced, more of a test bed. Its early engine had 780 horsepower, not bad at all. That gave it 20 HP per ton, decent battlefield mobility, it could cruise up to 70 clicks on the highway, agile enough to dodge trouble and reposition quickly under fire. Main gun was a Russian-style 2A46, very solid. Fired APFSDS, HEAT, and even laser-guided missiles if needed. The auto-loader system meant the rate of fire stayed consistent. Plus, fewer crew means fewer lives at risk in combat. Zulfikar III was the real deal, the final version. Unveiled in 2011, it looked much sharper and tougher. It got a new turret, totally redesigned for combat. Sleek, angular lines made it resemble the mighty Abrams. Its engine was bumped up to a thousand horsepower flat paired with a seven-wheel suspension for better ground grip. Much smoother ride, less bounce, way more stability under stress. That meant better accuracy and quicker reaction during battle. It even got special thermal camouflage netting on top. Makes it harder to see through infrared surveillance gear, which matters big time when drones are watching everything now. It's not just about armor anymore, it's about stealth. Fire control system was upgraded too. KAT-72 installed. It's Iran's localized version of that Slovenian EFCS-3 tech. Laser rangefinder, ballistic computer, auto-targeting, all packed in. Now the gunner could hit even moving targets on time. Laser warning system? Yep, it's built in as well. If an enemy laser locks on, the crew gets alerts. It can auto-launch smoke grenades to hide from view. That seriously improves survival chances in open field fights. Let's talk secondary weapons. 
two 12.7 millimeters on the turret. Great for shooting infantry, drones, or even low-flying helicopters. One coaxial 7.62 millimeter machine gun lines up beside gun. Together, they cover blind spots and keep threats back. Despite lighter armor, it's agile and great at dodging. It can climb steep hills, cross trenches, smash obstacles easily. Torsion bar suspension from the M60 handles rough terrain fine. That combo of power and maneuver makes it highly flexible. Armor isn't top tier, probably composite or layered steel. Turret shape deflects shells better, adds some passive defense. No explosive reactive armor yet, but design supports it. Zulfikar's defense depends more on movement and smarts than brute. Its low height helps it hide, smaller target to hit. That alone makes a difference in ambushes or open fields. Ammo is stored under the turret, high-risk zone. If hit there, things could go bad real fast. We don't know exact numbers, but maybe a hundred built, not mass-produced like Abrams or T-90 tanks by comparison. Mostly used in parades, drills, maybe limited field deployments. No confirmed combat missions, just tests and displays so far. So what do you think of the Zulfikar tank? Is it strong enough to hold its ground in battle? Should Iran invest in newer versions or change direction? Drop a comment, let's talk, and don't forget subscribe.